Good afternoon. This is the Duke of Fremont Street in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Monday, October 4th, 2021. Before beginning uh, my video today, I would like to uh, welcome you to my YouTube channel and I would like to welcome you to this video. Salute. Wow. Outstanding. Um, today is somewhat lackluster in the market. It has been lately. Uh, we're up a little, but uh, nothing earth shattering. It's, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we've been experiencing a lot of those days lately. And uh, frankly, I, I can't give you an explanation for that, but you know, it's like steady as it goes. In today's video, I would uh, like to pose a very serious question. And that question is, are we heading into a new dark ages era? Um, I believe we are. And um, obviously this is very troubling. And um, to make a statement like that right now, I think I would like to expound upon it. Um, right now in the world, we're having a breakdown of our traditional customs, uh, mores, and uh, family values. And I believe this is uh, eroding our uh, society and wearing off um, the, the thin veneer of civilization that we have that's left. So uh, there's uh, no reason to explain what I'm saying. I think you all understand what I'm saying. Um, there is definitely uh, uh, an attack on our traditional uh, values that, as Americans. And um, I find this very, very disturbing. Um, we have a border today, as you're aware, that's in crisis. We no longer have a southern border to the United States. We have a frontier. And a frontier is um, a lawless area where people can come and go as they please and uh, at their whim and uh, bring whatever uh, drugs or diseases or uh, weapons or uh, problems with them. Obviously, we have uh, people that feel that this is a good thing. I think it's a terrible thing for our society. It's a terrible thing for our country. And as a nationalist, and I'm proud to say I believe in the United States of America, I think this is absolutely devastating to our country. Uh, if, we, uh, if we don't uh, secure borders, I believe we're going to become uh, more lawless as a nation. Perfect example, uh, we're all asked to mask up and, and mandated to do this and mandate, and they, they act like this is a law. It's not a law, it's a mandate. It's uh, at the whim of the governor or whatever of, of the state. And ask that to all the Afghan refugees, where's your mask? Ask that to all the Haitian refugees, where's your mask? Ask that to all the um, Mexican refugees or Mexican migrants, where's your mask? Oh, and have you been vaccinated? See, it seems like the citizens of this country are the ones that are not um, getting the benefits of our protections. So um, needless to say, I think this is um, contrary to our, our fundamental um, values of the United States of America. And it's a detriment to our, our, uh, our country. Um, if we disregard law and order, um, we're going to go into a chaotic nation. There's elements that want to uh, get rid of our second amendment, second amendment rights. I'm a second amendment advocate. I believe in the right to bear arms. 
And there's also an element that wishes to defund the police. Um, to me, this is absurd. The whole concept is absurd. And uh, uh, I don't believe that, uh, I, I don't take it for real. Like it's, it's, it's hard for me to even uh, take it seriously. Uh, there's uh, an absolute assault on our personal freedoms and uh, civil liberties with the mandates and the lockdowns. And um, this, is, uh, this is undermining um, our American way of life. We have a loss of education today. We have a, um, a um, generation of young students that didn't even attend classes for almost the last two years other than virtually. And how'd that work out for them? Um, we had dumbed down our children to begin with. And um, now there, I would say that the illiteracy rate is, is growing at a, a rampant pace. Uh, let me add this. I'm speaking in generalities. There's some brilliant kids out there and there's uh, some wonderful young people that are trying to achieve. And I take my hat off to you, I think. Uh, especially in these trying times, it's very admirable what you're doing. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, I've sure noticed, that um, we're living in a society that has a loss of civility. Uh, we've seen people that are angry and upset and high-strung and their fuse is about ready to, it's sharpened. Um, there's also a lack of manners. Um, and uh, most importantly, there's a lack of respect in generality. When I come across anyone young or old that shows me respect, I will do anything I can to accommodate those human beings. Um, we're, uh, we're living in a society that's more and more dependent on a grid and on um, this grid uh, is very fragile. Uh, perfect example today, the social a couple of the, the social media giant I won't mention, um, at least in in my uh, neck of the woods, and from what I hear on on TV in a lot of areas, went down. They're having problems with their uh, with something, whether it's you know malicious or not. It doesn't matter. It's down, and there is no access to it. Um, I feel the same way about the, the uh, potential of having these cryptocurrencies or so forth. Uh, this is all gonna depend on a grid and it's all gonna depend on electricity and power and everything being up and running and perfectly. And I'm not certain that's always gonna happen. Uh, a few weeks ago here in uh, Las Vegas, the, uh, the new stadium, it's only been open a short while, uh, they, they're cashless and their, uh, their cash um, processing machines went down. So you have these people that had no way of uh, parking close, so they're walking in, in some cases, more than a mile. And they're worn out and they're tired and they're thirsty. And guess what? They couldn't even be served a glass of water or in these days, a, a bottle of water, you know, a $7 bottle of water, because there was no ability to process anybody's um, uh, orders. So it's amazing how we move from a modern high-tech society into a medieval society, just like that. So whatever happened, the switch was pulled and, um, and nobody uh, was able to um, have any kind of refreshment whatsoever. I think our grid's vulnerable, and I believe it will always be vulnerable. It's subject to attack by perhaps foreign uh, parties, foreign nations, or even um, in the case of some of these criminal elements, the ransomwares and so forth. Um, I think, generally speaking, we live in a nation of ostriches. I think there's... Um, people that would rather not hear what's going on. They just want to go about their mundane existence and, and forget what's going on. Uh, they're apathetic. 
they're torpid, clueless, um, comatose. And I suggest that they wake up and they wake up um, quickly because one day we're going to get out of bed and we're going to see a world that we're not going to recognize. And I hope I'm wrong with that evaluation. Uh, we have a world today that's no longer based on common sense. Um, some of the mandatory restrictions or some of the arbitrary um, uh, attitudes of our elected officials um, absolutely baffle me, totally baffle me. While we're at it, um, I'm a proud member not active, but a proud member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Both sides of my family fought for the Confederate States of America. And today we have this new, for lack of a better phrase, cancel culture, where uh, you have these um, uninformed, uneducated, illiterate, and in some cases, heathens, destroying statues, desecrating graves, uh, banning books, um, this, to me, a uh, rewriting history uh, is uh, very, uh, uh, very reminiscent of the, the Nazi era uh, in pre-war Germany. Um, some more good news. Our supply chain, as they say, is broken. Uh, that I would believe. And you've been to the store lately. Um, you can't get the items that you normally could get in the past. And if you do manage to find them, in many cases, they're much more expensive than they were a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Uh, our inflation, as we're well aware, I don't care what the party line is, is uh, it's uh, rapidly out of control. And uh, with this further debasement of our currency by the never-ending uh, printing and digitizing of the um, U.S. dollar, um, I don't see um, anything getting better anytime soon. The old uh, tax and spend uh, philosophy is, uh, is uh, almost becoming the law of the land right now. Um, I'm sure you've heard of global warming. I'm a firm believer that yes, we are having global warming. I think, yes, it is somewhat uh, man-made and uh, I don't have a solution to that. I think if we turned off all the electricity tomorrow, we're still going to uh, suffer some grim consequences from uh, either natural or events or some of the things that we've done in the past. It's getting so bad that I say here in Vegas, the water level is down at Lake Mead, which is controlling our electric grid and actually is the water that comes out of our tap. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if they start rationing the water within a year or so. Um, every few minutes they have a commercial on TV with these little kids, a little children, you know, chastising us, telling us not to water on this day and not to do that. And that. Um, they even uh, suggest that neighbors keep an eye on their neighbors. This once again sounds very familiar. My godfather was from Mainz, Germany. My godmother was from Berlin, Germany. They actually uh, survived the worst parts of World War II, where they were in Berlin in 1945. And they told me about some of the things that were happening in Germany at that time prior to the war. And um, it's eerily similar with what I see going on in at least our country today. Um, there's extreme tension around the world, as you know. I just listened to one of the reports on the news about the communist Chinese flying over Taiwan and exercising their, their or flexing their muscles and so forth. I think they're testing us as Americans. They see the weak response we had and the debacle we had in Afghanistan. And it's, um, it's possible that they're, they're testing our will to, uh, to step up to the plate when it comes to the, uh, to the uh, treaties that we have with Taiwan. Uh, their goal is literally to, to take over Taiwan and, and make it um, part of the Chinese regime. Um, 
There's many regions of conflict throughout the world, as you know. And I believe a lot of these are climate-based, uh, some are uh, religious-based, uh, some are politically motivated. But for whatever reason, there's a lot of turmoil and there's a lot of trigger points. And at any time, um, I believe this could explode like a powder keg. And I certainly hope it doesn't. So, um, everything that I've said so far is, I would, I would call it doom and gloom. And uh, this uh, new dark ages era that I believe we're moving into uh, is nothing unique. Every generation has had to deal with adversity, uh, despots, uh, uh, famine, crisis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, what makes us any different? The the global situation uh, with uh, many things, as I discussed, uh, the climate, uh, geopolitical, economic, uh, looks dire. But that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we should throw in the towel or jump off a cliff. I believe uh, most of these uh, uh, situations are way beyond the control of the normal human being today. It doesn't matter what continent they live on. So, I believe rather than destroying yourself over what you can't take care of or what you can't resolve, I believe you should concentrate on what you can control. And to me, it's very important to control your own destiny. And I believe that's very, very uh, possible. I have a few ways that I suggest that you would do that. One would be to stay informed and to become involved. Um, uh, take control of the, the, the uh, situation around you. Don't buckle and don't give in and don't conform. You don't necessarily have to um, march and step with everyone else at all times. Um, my grandmother even gave me a little painting that I hung on the wall for years saying that she felt that I marched to the beat of a different drummer. March to the beat of a different drummer. I, I don't think it hurts to show a little disobedience when we have lawbreakers all over the United States getting away with unthinkable things. I, I don't think it's um, unconscionable to um, say what I say when I walk into a a shop or a, a commercial building, they'll say, where's your mask? And I say, oh, it's okay, I'm an American, and just keep going. Well, then they badge me, and I finally put the mask on, um, out of protest, but I'll do it. And it's just my little uh, form of civil disobedience. Um, incidentally, uh, I believe the same way about the vaccine. I think that's a personal choice. I've been vaccinated. Uh, I've been vaccinated for just about everything you can think of. And uh, in this past few weeks, I was uh, had a steroid shot for sinuses, and a flu shot, and a pneumonia shot. And a few months ago, I had my uh, COVID shots. Not that anybody cares. But the point I'm trying to make is there's a there's a um, attitude in our society today, and that attitude is if I don't like it, you don't get to do it, and that's the wrong attitude. We're Americans. We uh, live, in my opinion, in the land of the free and the home of the brave. So be brave enough to stand by, stand your gun, stand your ground, have your convictions, and um, in some cases practice a little civil disobedience. I'm not advocating rioting or any of this nonsense. Uh, what I am advocating is standing up for your rights and not allow uh, tyranny and despots anywhere in this planet to, to uh, throw your freedoms away. Um, my major wall of defense uh, is the precious metals. I believe that the precious metals, once again, have withstood the test of time thousands of years. Uh, they're 
untraceable. They're tangible. You can hold it in your hand. You'll have to defend it. Oh, incidentally, I'm a Second Amendment advocate. I believe if you got it, you have a right to hold on to it. If you uh, procured it in honest um, labor and sweat, then it's yours. It belongs to you and no one else. Once again, we have a society that uh, is becoming more and more unaccountable for their actions. And uh, I'm absolutely opposed to the entitlement mentality. I believe that we're all on an equal playing field. I don't think there's any underlying uh, prejudices against anybody. This is a, a game down here that we're all playing. We all want to achieve. We all, all want our families to prosper. We all want to live um, a prosperous and uh, healthy life. And I think prejudice personally, while we're on the subject, is in, um, immoral. And I believe it's, uh, as a businessman, it's silly. Um, I, uh, I've dealt business, uh, I've done business with people for decades uh, from all walks of life, all ethnicities, all uh, religions, and generally speaking, get along with all of them. So, uh, like I said, uh, we've got um, a worldwide acceptance of the precious metals. I don't care if you go to ten buck two; they know what silver and gold is. I personally like the the silver dollars, the halves, the quarters. You know, the constitutional money. That was money up until about sixty four when they took the silver out of it. Uh, to me, it's always been money, and always will be money. I actually have a real, um, quite fond of my own Duke Ducats, which I talk about all the time. Uh, my image, uh, or a caricature of my image is on the Duke Ducat. And I mended those a few years back and the mini Duke Ducats, the 10 ounce pieces. Um, one of my most recent acquisitions I am quite fond of, this is a um, Austrian Ducat which is uh, uh, 0.1106 ounces of uh, actual gold weight. Uh, I never uh, issued or minted uh, gold Duke ducats. So I, uh, ducat means the Duke's money. So I, I kind of like these. I think they're really neat. I think I'm going to start uh, hoarding them. <laughs> uh, let me wrap this up. I've taken a lot of your time today. Um, I personally don't apologize for anything um, to anyone uh, that I've done or that my ancestors have done. I, I believe that we, um, we um, are accountable for our own actions and not things that happened 200 years ago in, 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 a, in time that we didn't even exist. I personally like labels, and if I had to label me, first I would label me a, um, a, a nationalist. I believe in this country, and I believe in the sanctity of the borders. And um, I've traveled virtually all over the world, six continents, dozens of countries. And I've never seen a softer, weaker border than ours, which is absurd, absolutely absurd. Um, I'm a realist. I'm not a pessimist. When I talk about the new dark ages era, I, I believe that this is a possibility. And the old saying is hope for the best and plan for the worst. That's what I'm suggesting you do. Um, I'm a capitalist. I believe in uh, wealth acquisition and wealth preservation. I don't worship money, but I recognize the power that it gives you and the options. Um, without it, uh, your options, I, as you're well aware, are very limited. Um, I'm a pragmatist. I don't uh, necessarily trot on other people or their rights, but um, I don't uh, feel that there's any any fault in trying to to achieve and succeed and and uh, claw my way up. Um, in, um, in uh, life. 
Um, I would say that the best thing that I could leave you with is that your future looks bright. Your future looks bright because you control it. You and you alone control your own destiny. And don't be overcome with the, the bad news. Arm yourself with the knowledge about what's going on and who's doing this and that and the other, and then rationally decide which direction you wanna go and what you wanna do with that information. Once again, I thank you for taking the time um, you have no idea how much I appreciate your support and um, your time. The most valuable commodity you have is your time. Especially as you get older, you're expending it and adding less and less of it. And uh, your subscriptions. I, uh, I thank you once again for stopping by. And I wish you nothing but wealth and health. Salute there. This is the Duke of Fremont Street in Las Vegas. And if you uh, happen to visit my village, I hope I get to see you then. So long.